Hey, this is Ed. And I'm Tracy, and we are in Bali, Indonesia. While in the army for 35 years, Eddie traveled the world, meeting so many interesting people and experiencing different cultures, but only where the military told him to go. Fortunately, during our 25 years of marriage, a few of his assignments gave us the opportunity to visit some pretty amazing places too. So come join us on this adventure of a lifetime as the La Rosas jump around the world. We started our adventure by driving to Stockton, California to visit family. We flew a military space available flight from California to Oahu, Hawaii, where we stayed for a week, then on to Okinawa, Japan. From Japan, we purchased a commercial flight to Bali that had a layover in Singapore. Holy cow, the Singapore airport is like a city. It has amazing art and interactive displays and tons of shops and eateries. Unfortunately, our flight kept getting delayed, so our layover turned into six hours. So we took the shuttle to another terminal to catch a movie in the airport theater. There is so much to see and do that the time flew by super fast. After enduring a six hour delay at the Singapore airport, we were finally on our way to Bali. As we were trying to land in Bali, the pilot came on and told us that the airport was closed due to heavy rain. We circled the airport for about an hour before we were finally able to land. We made it to Bali! Finally, finally, finally we made it. I had booked an airport taxi on booking.com and our poor driver, Kadek, had to wait forever due to our delays. He was so great that we hired him to tour us around the island, which we'll share more about later. It was a long day and we didn't arrive at our lodging in Sanur until 2 a.m. This sweet note was waiting for us at the front gate. These Hindu offerings, Chanang Sari, are an offering of thanks and peace to the gods. Our villa was like a little oasis behind these doors. There were only five units and each one had a view of the courtyard pool. They also had a great community kitchen that we could use, as well as a comfy dining area. After our long travel day, it was nice to just sit back and relax. After a few hours of sleep, we ventured out to this amazing French cafe just around the corner from our lodging. The owner said his wife is French and she makes everything from scratch, even the breads. My avocado toast was loaded with avocado and only cost $4.50 USD. As you can see, Eddie really enjoyed his farmer's omelet as well. We only stayed in Sonora two nights as we were biding our time until we checked into our timeshare for a week in Candidasa. Here's our room for a week. At first I thought that was our bed. <laughs> Kitchen, living room space, complimentary coffee and stuff every day. Coming into the bedroom, and the AC is pumping. Bathroom through here. There's a shower. Oh, it's hiding in the corner. There's a secret baby room over here. This is where Eddie sleeps if he gets in trouble. In the corner. First stop at our resort, the pool bar. We needed a few groceries, so we headed out. There was a small convenience store about five minutes away by foot. We're in Bali. Getting wet. During the rainy season. <laughs> but it's beautiful. Can 
you believe we got all of this for 20 bucks? We really wanted more fruits and veggies, but we were told we needed to go to the local market for that, which wasn't walkable. The next morning, we walked down the street for breakfast. Their menu had a great selection of Western, Vietnamese, and Thai, and their coffees, spot on. Can you believe this bread was only $2.25? I was so excited for it, but unfortunately, it wasn't as good as it looked. I purchased a two and a half hour spa package for 30 bucks. It included a facial, a full body massage, and hair washing. Off to dinner just down the street at Lazat Restaurant. On one of our morning walks, we came across a scal selling Nasi Jingo, which is a ready-to-eat street food. The cost? Less than 50 cents. It was so good with great flavor and consisted of rice, noodles, veggies, and possibly some fish. When we told our driver we ate it, he was surprised that our stomachs could handle it. We hired our airport driver to take us around the island. We told him the sites we wanted to visit, and he put together two full days of touring for us. The first day cost $70 and the second day cost $60. Both were 12 hour days and the cost was a steal for a private driver and all we were able to see and do. Thanks, Kadek. We're heading out on our first day of adventuring in Bali and we're heading with the driver to West Bali. So let's see what today holds. Our first stop was Pura Goa Loa. Pura means temple. We had to rent sarongs for a small fee before entering. Our entry fee also included a guide. This temple is one of the six sanctuaries of the world in Bali and thus one of the six most holy places on the island. Thousands of fruit bats live in this cave. We thought we were going to be able to go all the way into the cave, but we were only allowed to view it from the outside. The Ubud area is known for its vibrant arts and crafts scene. We stopped to see traditional Balinese woodcarvers at work. It takes tremendous talent and skill to make the designs. Some of the wood they use is teak, hibiscus, and crocodile wood. It's called that because the bark looks like the back of a crocodile. We purchased a few treasures and then Eddie got to try his hand at carving. I think the hardest part for him was sitting crisscross applesauce. I'm gonna try to do it how he does it. No, just cut it. One more. Have you ever tried the famous Luwak poop coffee? Luwak coffee, or civet coffee, is a coffee made from the beans of coffee berries which have been eaten by the Asian palm civet then pass through its digestive tract. Following the collection of the cat's waste, the beans are carefully washed, dried, pounded, and finally roasted over an open fire. Sounds yummy, right? This by hand. Yeah, we cross, uh -huh. and then just pinning for the skin. Okay. Until we got like this, yeah? Okay. So don't worry, this coffee not contact with uh, poop. So <laughs> this is my coffee machine. <laughs> Coffee Maybe machine. Okay, this is the Luwak coffee, and they extract the beans from the poop. Okay. Now she said compare it with the Balinese coffee. They say the Luwak coffee is better. I mean, it's definitely a different flavor. And not I think extra. Okay, Luwak poop coffee. <laughs> okay. Balinese coffee. The Balinese are almost like smoother, like 
creamy. Hmm. In a weird way. You'd think the poopy coffee would be creamy. <laughs> this is the durian coffee. If you're not familiar with durian, look it up. It smells like rotten eggs. <laughs> you know, if I didn't know it was durian, it'd probably taste better. We sampled 16 different flavors of coffees and teas. The coffee flavors were the Luwak and Bali coffee, as well as coconut, vanilla, ginger, and ginseng. The teas we sampled were mangosteen, ginger, lemon, lemongrass, rosella, durian, and herbal. We also got to try Bali cocoa and Bali mochaccino. We paid $5 each for a cup of the Luwak coffee, but the other samples were complimentary. Of course, they want you to buy tea and coffee to take home, which we did. Did I mention the Luwak coffee is the most expensive coffee in the world? We are going to savor our tiny bag of it. I'd seen photos of the Bali swing all over Instagram and knew that we had to go there. Was it touristy? Yep. More expensive than most other things? Yep. Worth it? Absolutely. However, here are a few tips. Pay the extra to rent the long flowing dresses. I had worn my own dress, but the flowy dress would have been better, I think. Also, you can take your own photos, but pay the extra for their photographers. They know what they're doing, they take hundreds of photos, and you get to keep them all. Plan to be there a few hours because there is a lot of waiting for your photo ops. The cost also includes a buffet lunch, which was nice at the end. I definitely should have skipped this swing. The photographer wanted me to lean back and look upside down. It made me feel so nauseous and I felt crappy for a while after. Safety first. Eddie, who never gets motion sick, said it even made him a little queasy. Our next stop were the beautiful rice terraces. Rice farming in Bali heavily relies on manual labor. Seedlings are transplanted into flooded fields by hand. As the plants mature, the fields are flooded and dried at specific stages to maximize growth, and they are periodically weeded. To harvest the rice, farmers meticulously cut through the rice stalks by hand using sickles. Another amazing experience in Bali. Our last stop of the day was Tanalot Temple, which means land in the sea. It's famous for its unique offshore setting and sunset backdrops. During high tide, the temple is separated from the land by the ocean. In order to go up to the temple, we were required to receive a blessing with the holy spring water and leave a small donation. After the blessing, we started walking up to the temple, which was just a dead end. We heard it was the best place to watch the sunset and it didn't disappoint. After a 12 hour day, we were famished. So our driver took us to a local restaurant where we were able to enjoy the rest of the sunset. After such a long day yesterday, we decided we needed a down day. This is how we do down days. We booked the snorkeling tour through our resort and they picked us up right at our beach. We headed out to the Blue Lagoon to start our snorkeling adventure. We jumped right in and the fish were plentiful. Well, maybe that's because our guide gave us food to attract them. As we swam along, I started getting stung by hundreds of what looked like teeny tiny jellyfish. My skin was crawling and I was so uncomfortable. So we got back onto our boat for a short break and look who showed up. Right, 
After a quick beverage, we hop back in and look who we found. It was a great few hours of downtime. We're calling today the Instagram Photo Op Tour. It's 5.30 in the morning and we arrived at the temple to try and get in line before all the tourists. There's a shuttle that takes you about five minutes up the hill to the ticket booth. Good morning. We are at the temple getting ready to get in line for our picture. We left our resort at 4.45 a.m. It's currently 5.45, so it took about an hour to get up here in the mountains. And we are number 12 in line. So we there's hope a, we're at 12 in line. There's a reason why you get here early. Our guide said if you come later, you're going to be waiting for about two hours. So we'll let you know how it goes. But we've got our sarongs on. We're ready for the day. After getting your ticket, you have to walk a few minutes uphill to the temple. While waiting our turn, we snapped a few pics around the temple. This is a well-oiled machine. Everyone has a number, and then they line you up, have you take pictures. Looks like our reflection is in the water, right? Nope, the photographer is just holding a mirror under the camera lens. Magic. We just got done at the temple taking the pictures and this is a well-oiled machine. Highly recommend getting up early and getting here. You take the pictures up there on the other side and then don't miss coming on this back side. You don't really see it, but there's a guy there and he'll take your pictures also and he also uses the mirror underneath, so. It's way better than waiting in line for two hours. For real. Churchaganga, also known as the Water Palace, is another perfect place for photos. The early bird gets the worm, or in our case, the uncrowded photos. Another bonus of getting up super early. We couldn't resist holding these animals on our way out. We know, we know, we probably shouldn't have supported it, but don't come at us. He wants to go. <laughs> Is he licking you? Ooh. You're salty. <laughs> The Saki Temple is known as the Mother Temple of Bali. It is the most important, largest, and holiest temple of Balinese Hinduism and sits at the base of Mount Agung. A ceremony was being held this day which made it even more special to visit. It is a complex of 23 separate temples with terraces and flights of stairs leading to courtyards. It's designed to lead the spiritual person upward and closer to the mountain, which is considered sacred. the waterfall and if you look at the Instagram photos just know that it's not gonna look like the Instagram photos because the minute you come around the corner to the waterfall there's all the mist is blowing so even if you don't want to get wet you're gonna get soaked like you literally look like drowned rats it was well worth it though it was it was really yeah. pretty but oh my gosh so maybe bring some dry clothes down with you because now we get a truck out in our wet clothes <laughs> When we arrived at the waterfall, we were taking our own pictures, but then we saw photographers posing and shooting other tourists. I assumed the tourists had paid for an Instagram photography tour. But when one of the photographers asked if we wanted our pictures taken, I asked him how much. He said it was just for tips only. Perfect. Best money ever spent.
Balancing on slippery rock with water pelting your face is easier said than done. Our guide called this a snakeskin fruit. So I'm gonna try it. So once you peel it, it looks like this. It kind of has different pieces to it. Let's try it. It kind of tastes like an apple, but really, like, I don't know how to explain it when you get like that, like you're, it's kind of citrusy, kind of tangy. And like my tongue is all puckery. <laughs> I'm not sure I like it. We really enjoy learning how to cook the local foods, so a cooking class is a great experience. First, the chef took us to the local market to buy everything that we needed for our dishes. There was an endless variety of fruits and veggies, lots of tofu, and some not so appetizing items as well. We tried the local drink called Sindal. It's made with green worm looking jellies, palm sugar, and coconut milk. The flavor was good, but I didn't love the chewy texture of the jellies. What is she saying about you? <laughs> Our first dish was a veggie appetizer called gado gado. Eddie was getting his workout preparing the fresh peanut sauce. This is our gado gado that we just made. Some yummy peanut sauce. It's good. Not a little spicy, but not. I was waiting for it to kick in. Yeah. Our main dish was tum ayam, a ground chicken dish loaded with flavor from lots of herbs and spices. Eddie was a fast learner at wrapping these. Not so much. I needed some extra help. Yeah. We pop them in the steamer for 30 minutes and voila. That's so good. Tastes of lemongrass. Yummy. Ooh, cockroach. For dessert, we made dadar gulum. This green pancake wrapper gets its color from pandan extract and is then filled with shredded coconut sweetened with palm sugar. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> Time to roll the coconut inside. First, she gave us a demo. Then it was our turn. Eddie, of course, mastered it. Maybe it's in his 25% Filipino blood. Again, I needed a little help with the rolling process. You may say I'm a Our time in Bali is over, and like we say every trip, we didn't have enough time. We definitely needed more time here, so now we're going to... Next stop is Manila. Philippines! A trip isn't complete without a visit to the airport lounge. So we are leaving Bali, and when we checked into our flight, she told us, she asked if we had an onward ticket from Manila because that's where we're going today and I wasn't sure if we needed one or not I've read conflicting reviews, but you need one so check out this website called onwardticket.com and what you do is you basically rent a ticket so it, they charge you $16 you put in um, your information where you're flying to and from out of the country it'll go away in 24 hours it doesn't cost you anything besides the $16 a person um, but it gives you an actual ticket confirmation and it it went through in like a minute and I showed the gal and we were on our way so onwardticket.com
Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to follow all of our adventures.